Tony Perkins is an ordained minister, a broadcaster, a Marine, and a former police officer, and a former legislator in the state of Louisiana. He's also the fourth and longest serving president of the Family Research Council and former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. He says while the world is burning, President Biden is fiddling away his time on his ridiculous woke agenda, only deepening the political divide in America. Please welcome to the show a longtime friend of mine, Tony Perkins. Tony, oh, thanks for coming here. Thank you. Good to be with you. It's great to have you. You are on the front lines of the cultural battles that are taking place in our country, and the Family Research Council has long been uh, a courageous entity. Right now, uh, you got lots to do, don't oh, you? It, under the Biden administration, it's like a hound dog at a squirrel farm. I mean, it, <laughs> you just, you don't know where to start. Yeah. Uh, the, the woke agenda has just taken over the administration. And what we're finding, and you made this in your opening, I thought it was very poignant. We're dealing with leftists, not liberals. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a big difference between liberals and leftists. I love liberals because you can debate with them and you can, and then you can go out and have lunch with them. And they're sane and rational people. They are. They just have a difference of opinion. Yeah. You see the world a little differently, but they don't, they don't want to shut you down. Yep. And what we see, I mean, you see out of this Biden administration, this uh, leftist agenda, for instance, you got parents who are now engaged in their the education of their children. They're going to school board meetings yeah. because we've through one of the silver linings from COVID was it exposed the indoctrination in the classroom. And then I was I was in DC last week flying out the night of the State of the Union, and I have never seen so much security in all my life. Every street was shut down by the National Guard uh, because the truckers were coming. They're afraid of the truckers. They were our heroes two Absolutely. years ago. I tell you what, I am so grateful for the truckers. Me too. I, I, Me too. Because I think, like you were just talking with Bob, you know, I think what the truckers were showing us that take what you have and do with it what you can do hmm. to save freedom. And that's why I just love what the truckers have been doing. Tony, one of the battles that you have been engaged in is something called the Equality Act. Oh. I mean, equality, aren't we all for that? So what's so wrong with the Equality Act? The Equality Act is the unequality or the inequality act. What this is designed to do is essentially to criminalize religious expression and participation. You, you've probably heard of the case that's actually unfolding right now in Finland with uh, Pavi Rosanen. She's a member of parliament. She uh, was as on trial for hate speech in part for tweeting out a Bible verse because she violated kind of Finland's version of the Equality Act. The outcome of this case, which actually could be handed down any day now, mm. could criminalize the Bible in Finland. Just tweeting out a Bible verse, just speaking about human sexuality as the Bible describes it, has been a violation of the law there in Finland. And again, it's their version of the Equality Act. What can Christians in America do? Because I think a lot of people say, well, you know, that's, that's too bad, but that doesn't affect me, or I can't do anything about it. Well, and that's what your organization is doing, trying to help people on what they can do. So what can they do? Well, what have we seen in the last two years? Your ability to go to church is controlled by the government. Yeah. And now we're seeing under a measure like the Equality Act, the ability to preach the gospel, because actually the prosecutor in the case said that calling someone a sinner was harmful and offensive. Callings? Well, Jesus would never be able to be welcomed in this culture, would he? So here's what we need to do, Governor, is that we need to use the freedom we have to preserve the freedom that our children deserve, or we all lose it. Mm. Well, I, I just hope that people will connect to Family Research Council because you guys have been on the front lines in a way that very few organizations have, with information to educate people in the country, particularly pastors and churches and Christian believers. So uh, we're certainly gonna tell them how to connect to well, it. And this is the greatest time actually, I think for the church, because the world is so confused. I mean, people, they don't know which bathroom to use. Uh, you know, it's th this, we, we have- Whichever one is closest at my age is <laughs> the way it works, I'll tell you that right now. We're, we're denying reality. 
And, and people are starting to catch on to this, that, look, we live in a totally upside-down, confused world. And I think as Christians, we stand on the Word of God. Hmm. That's the definitive word for us. And I think even in the midst of the cancel culture, even in the midst of the hostility we see on social media, which really doesn't even matter yeah. in the big picture, as people come to their senses, they're looking for stability. They're looking for a sense of meaning. And if we're living out the purpose that God has given us, guess what? I think we're going to attract a lot of people to the truth of the gospel if we're brave enough to live it out. And that's what we've got to be. Amen. For our audience, if you'd like to keep up with Tony Perkins, and I hope you will, go to Huckabee.tv. We have links for you right there to all the things that Tony and the Family Research Council is doing. 